Welcome to another tutorial. Um, I'm going to talk about the new feature I've finally got round to adding and that is uh, the object gizmo. And so when you click and drag on something now, once it's been selected, um, the gizmo comes up and allows you to edit that uh, in um, different ways. So before we had to hold keys like S for scale and R to rotate, now we can just use the, the gizmo and rotate it in various different ways um, or scale the object here um, or you can scale it in one direction there or you can use these lines and translate up and down um, so that's fairly easy um, just a, a reminder once you've lifted something in the air that's actually still attached to the ground but it's attached now or linked to the ground but a certain distance above the ground. So when I move this object up the hill, if I just grab that and move it up the hill, it's still going to stay on top of the ground. And if I move that back down, there you see, it's still above the ground. It doesn't sink into the mountain. And that property is part of the, the rest on ground here. If I turn that off now, it's still sitting above the ground. But if I push that across there, you'll see it's actually going across a, a horizontal plane and disappearing into the, the mountain as I, as I pull it across. Um, whereas before it would flow with the terrain. If I turn this back on, it'll immediately snap back down to the ground and then resume its um, path up the mountain again. Um, now these um, translation uh, lines here, they ignore the, the ground, so it's just going to go continuing along that uh, axis there. Um, R, G, and B for red, green, blue, it translates to X, Y, and Z axis, if you're curious. Um, now, so far, I've just been doing one object. If you grab a second object, uh, the gizmo sits between them, and then you can rotate. Oops, I've got to make sure I and hold on, rotate um, both of them there. Now we're rotating in local space at the moment, so if I do this, uh, these two are going to both go the same way, but if I rotate that 180 degrees roughly, and then grab this one again, and we do that, you can see they're going in their local axes. Now I can just switch that over to global here, and we do the rotation again, and that's going in the, the global direction. We can scale in global and we can translate in global. If we uh, we can't uh, scale on one axis in global because RTB doesn't support it. I don't actually keep the properties of multiple um, local and global uh, scaling there. I just keep the one scale. If we switch back here and I move on that axis, again it's going on their own local axis. Um, so that's um, hopefully much more useful than what you had to do before which was remember all the, the keys that went with it and of course you can still just um, hold shift down and, and drag multiple objects just by grabbing anywhere on that box once it's available to select the object either you have to click it of course or uh, lasso it um, and just in case you're wondering what this uh, fabulous landscape is, this is coming out with the next um, change as well. It's, this is actually a 16K texture. And um, I personally wouldn't really recommend using 16K textures because a lot of the time you might be wanting to do a track around here and using all of that texture memory to, to do stuff off in the distance. And it really doesn't need to be um, that high res um, but it's an option and it's coming soon and uh, 16k um, texture takes up uh, a square texture takes up one gig of memory so in order to do this of course I've had to um, rewrite and make a 64 bit version of RTB which is coming out too so we'll have a lot more memory space to play with more good news Anyway, thanks for watching and the beta will be out soon.